good morning dear students today in this video we are going to discuss about the questions given in the exercises part of the lesson force and pressure okay let us see the first question give two examples each of situations in which you push or pull to change the state of motion of objects first of all take examples of situations in which we push first example we have to push the switch to switch on second example we have to push a car if it has starting problem another example we have to push the accelerator in a car to speed up now let us take examples of situations in which we pull take the first example as we have to pull the rope to hoist a flag second example we have to pull the rope to dry a bucket of water from the well another example we have to pull the rope to win in the tug of war game shall i move to the next question give two examples of situations in which applied force causes a change in the shape of an object let us take some examples of situations in which applied force causes a change in the shape first example we apply force on a rubber band to change its shape by stretching second example we apply force on a sponge to change its shape another example we apply force on a toothpaste tube to change its shape okay next coming to the third question fill in the blanks in the following statement a to draw water from a well we have to dash at the rope what we have to do we have to pull at the rope b a charged body dash an uncharged body towards it guess the answer yes a charged body attracts an uncharged body towards it next c to move a loaded trolley we have to dash it we have to push it and d the north pole of a magnet dash the north pole of another magnet we know that like poles are repel and unlike poles are attract so these are like poles so they repel each other coming to the fourth question an archer stretches her bow while taking aim at the target she then releases the arrow which begins to move towards the target based on this information fill up the gaps in the following statements using the following terms what are the terms given muscular contact non contact gravity friction shape and attraction a to stretch the bow the archer applies a force that causes a change in its dash let us see if we apply a force to stretch the bow there is a change in its shape so our answer is shape b the force applied by the archer to stretch the bow is an example of dash force yes it is a muscular force c the type of force responsible for a change in its state of motion of the arrow is an example of dash force we know that there are two types contact and non contact forces here bow apply the force on the arrow by touching it so it is a contact force d while the arrow moves towards its target the forces acting on it are due to dash and that due to dash of air if the arrow moves the gravitational force continuously acting on it and the air in the atmosphere applies a frictional force on it and next we are going to the fifth question in the following situations identify the agent exerting the force and the object on which it acts and also state the effect of the force in each case a 
squeezing a piece of lemon between the fingers to extract its juice? Answer is force applied by the fingers, force applied on the lemon, force can change the shape of lemon. Next situation B. Taking out paste from a toothpaste tube. Here force applied by the fingers, force applied on the toothpaste tube, force can change the shape of the tube. Next situation C. A load suspended from a spring while its other end is on a hook fixed to a wall. Here force applied by the suspended load, force applied on the spring and force can change the shape of the spring. Last situation D. An athlete making a high jump to clear the bar at a certain height. Here force applied by the muscles of the athlete, force applied on the athlete, force can change the state of motion of the athlete. And next sixth question. A blacksmith hammers a hard piece of iron while making a tool. How does the force due to hammering effect on the piece of iron? Answer. Blacksmith hammers a hard piece of iron while making a tool. The force due to hammering causes the change in the shape of the iron. So that the iron can be molded in the shape of the required tool. And coming to the seventh question. An inflated balloon was pressed against a wall after it has been rubbed with a piece of synthetic cloth. It was found that the balloon sticks to the wall. What force might be responsible for the attraction between the balloon and the wall? Here an inflated balloon was rubbed with a synthetic cloth. If we rubbed a balloon with a synthetic cloth, it become charged. So the balloon sticks to the wall. It is due to electrostatic force. Now let us see the eighth question. Name the forces acting on a plastic bucket containing water held above ground level in your hand. Discuss why the forces acting on the bucket do not bring a change in its state of motion. First of all, we see the forces acting on the bucket. First one is muscular force of the arms acting upward and second one is force of gravity acting downward. The reason for no change in the state of motion is the two forces are acting equal and opposite directions. Thus they cancel each other's effect. So the forces acting on the bucket do not bring a change in its state of motion. Now let us move to the ninth question. A rocket has been fired upwards to launch a satellite in its orbit. Name the two forces acting on the rocket immediately after leaving the launching pad. What are the forces? First one is gravitational force of the earth. It always in downward direction and second one is frictional force of air. It is in opposite direction to the motion of the rocket. Last question. When we press the bulb of a dropper with its nozzle kept in water, air in the dropper is seen to escape in the form of bubbles. Once we release the pressure on the bulb, water gets filled in the dropper. The rise of water in the dropper is due to dash. Here, if we press the bulb of the dropper, the air in the dropper is escape in the form of bubbles. That means we create a low pressure in the bulb of a dropper. The atmospheric pressure is more than the pressure in the bulb. So the water rises into the dropper. So our answer is atmospheric pressure. Dear students, I provide PDF file of these notes in the description of this video. You may check out and write your notes.